Welcome back to the UMass Sports Insider. Coming at you from the Marty Jacobson Football Performance Center for our UMass Football Spring Special presented by Milton Cat. We've got an hour-long show for you and a lot to get to as we talk with some key returners for the UMass football team and some of the new additions as the Minutemen have hit the transfer portal and have welcomed in some stellar freshmen. We're going to get to it all, including a conversation with the new offensive coordinator, Shane Montgomery. But first, we start at the top with head coach Don Brown entering his third season here on campus this time around, I guess. Coach, yeah. how you doing? Good to see you. Doing good. Doing really well. So, uh, wanted to warm up a little bit. Spring practice we'll right around there. the corner. We got a uh, spring game on April 27th. You're going to start practicing and you've got this new group coming in. I mean, the yeah. whole signing day world has changed. You're looking at now really 22 has. transfers coming in. You got some freshmen as well. Tell us about the kind of the makeup of this class and how you decided to bring guys in. Yeah, um, obviously, you know, uh, I'd be lying if I said we're not a portal team because we basically are. And what that means is you're directing, you're trying to get a little bit older, a little bit more mature, um, get guys that have. Uh, been in programs where they've they've had to lift, work, you know, divide their time between schoolwork and playing, and uh, you know we think we've done a really really good job of identifying not only good players but good people yeah. as well. As we take a look at the incoming class, when you include some of the preferred walk-ons, 22 transfers as it stands right now, 10 freshmen, still some open slots down yes. the line. So when you looked at you know needs for this team, what were some of the, the focal points for your squad? Well, um, pretty much obviously every year you're gonna have to rebuild yourself in the offensive line. And uh, this year's no exception. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we've signed four guys there and anxious to see how they'll all play out. Uh, defensive line, obviously a point of need. Um, and we've done a good job in that area as well. But this year, unlike a year ago, um, w injuries, graduation, uh, we really had to do a good job in the uh, wide receiver position and also in the defensive backfield uh, at all four positions on the defensive backfield. We're going to uh, hear from one of the new wide receivers as well that uh, has joined us here later on on the show. We're also going to talk with your new offensive coordinator, Shane Montgomery, who's been yeah. around the world of college football. But how about the returning production that you're looking at? This is yeah. one of the first years I can remember where you've got star running back K. Ron Lynch Adams yeah. returning. We're going to talk with him as well. And Tyson Pumachong. Yeah. Your quarterback. Yeah, and, and Simpson, too, uh, who had 50-plus catches for us, uh, you know, obviously at the receiver position, and he certainly is a, you know, he's got excellent speed. Um, unlike not all receivers, this guy loves football, loves to practice. The, he's the happiest guy I know when practice starts. We're in the middle of winter workouts and he is just tearing it up. When you're talking about prospective student athletes and looking through the portal, how much does it help you when they know that you've got a guy like Tyson Pumachong here kind of locked into that position? Well, you know, I think he impacted us in recruiting this year as we've gotten a few guys that have taken really a similar track uh, that he took and uh, you know I think some of these guys look to him for leadership and uh, you know he certainly provides that for those those guys that are that he's friends with but he really provides leadership for our football team. Well you're always saying it's about relationships right? It's all about relationships. Not only for coaches but players as well. 100%. You have uh, kind of an interesting situation where you're bringing in guys that have played five years, yep. some entering their sixth year yep. of college football. I think you told me a couple of years ago one of the mistakes that you made your first year here was not bringing in enough of those guys. Yep. How much does leadership play into the development and, and recruitment of guys saying, hey, I think this guy is going to be able to, to lead our team? Yeah, I think, I think it's a huge deal, especially with the portal guys because – if they're 
mature, they've been in it for a while and can't provide leadership, but there's usually, that's usually a red flag, I would say. Now, the one thing that you did bring up that is true and very true for us is when we looked at our production, 77% uh, uh, of our offensive production returns. That means the guys that are catching it, the guys that are running it, uh, guys that are, uh, you know, providing key blocks, you know, taking care of ball security, all those things. Then you go on the defensive side, 75% of our production is returning. So there's 77%, there's 75%, and one of these uh, uh, groups, you know, when, you, when you're looking at those kinds of numbers, what it means for us is uh, we're 15th in the country in terms of production returning, which is a big deal. It also means you don't have to kind of re-coach all the things that you've coached <laughs> over the last two years. That makes it a little bit easier on you. It really does, and, and it's nice to have, a, you know, be able to go out there during winter workouts, and, you know, we're kind of getting in small groups and, and uh, you know, getting organized, and you can see our guys have a good feel about what they're doing. And not only that, those guys are providing our new players that are coming out of the portal and and taken to the system for the first few weeks. They, they're definitely providing those guys with role modeling, uh, you know, so the guys have an idea of what to do next. We're excited here on the spring football special presented by Milton Cat to not only visit with student athletes, and we'll talk with Director of Athletics Ryan Bamford as well down the line, but uh, a new member on the staff here. And, you know, you didn't have a lot of staff turnover, which is kind of a rarity these days you welcome in a new offensive coordinator we're going to talk with him in just a couple of minutes you know what's his background what excites you about you know, having all that experience come your way well you just said it you know he, he's an experienced guy uh he's a guy that's a you know noted uh offensive coordinator um been a head coach you know at miami so you know shane's really a a class individual um I can already tell that the players are taking to him and, uh, you know, getting to know him. You know, we spent four hours uh, two weeks ago and just talking football and, and uh, you know, he and I see eye to eye. You know, he's an RPO guy, uh, which, you know, most, a lot of teams are, but I, I think he has a tremendous feel for it. And, uh, you know, we're just really happy to have him join our staff. The other slight adjustment we made, <laughs> Steve Terrell, who's, who's been with me for a long time, has moved into the defensive uh, line role that was uh, left open when, uh, you know, with, with one coach leaving. And uh, obviously, uh, nice to have him back in his home position. Yep. Uh, he did a, such a good job for us in, administratively and, you know, was just waiting for the opportunity that arose to get Steve back in his uh, sweet spot, so to say, and that's and, coaching the defensive line. And one of the great guys of the game as well. Oh, no doubt. Coach, congratulations on this class. Looking forward to seeing spring ball. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are just getting revved up here on the UMass Sports Insider Football Spring Special. We're going to talk with the offensive coordinator, new OC in the house. But first, let's take a look back at some of the big moments from last season for the Minutemen.
the team, behind your team, and your school. We're also the team our customers rely on. Wherever things are getting done, powered up, and made better with Caterpillar equipment in the Northeast, you'll find Milton Cat, the team prepared for every challenge. Milton Cat, always ready. At Bay State Health, we are compelled to be a force for good. That compassionate, spirited, and steadfast drive has helped us be the difference for you and so many others within our diverse human family. Every day, in ways big and small, we are humbled and privileged that our impactful care helps you go on to make all the difference in your own world. Together, we have the capacity to transform lives. A-State Health, advancing care, enhancing lives. The reviews are in. The Mass Lottery's first $50 instant game is the must-have scratch ticket of the year. How do you like them apples? Players agree, it's the best payout yet. Show me the money! Lottery Quarterly raves a grand prize like we've never seen. Massachusetts makes history again. Billion Dollar Extravaganza. Now playing at a lottery retailer near you. This ain't nothing but a little movement therapy. Why me as my shoulders moving voluntarily? Step left with a zip go right. When you get it, I get it, nigga, hit both sides like that. Elevate how you hydrate and keep it smart with Smart Water Alkaline. When you need to dig, lift, move, cut, or just about anything else, then dial up the rental source staffed with equipment and construction experts. They'll help you get the right machine for the job and make sure it's delivered when and where you need it. With locations across New England and the newest and most reliable inventory, Milton Rents is your local source. Welcome back to the UMass Sports Insider Spring Football Special back at the Marty Jacobson Football Performance Center. And we are excited to introduce to you the new offensive coordinator for Massachusetts football, Shane Montgomery, who joins us now. And Coach, welcome to Amherst. How are you doing? Thank you. It's been good. It's been a good first week, I can tell you that. That's great to hear. We're excited to get a little bit of your background, which is very extensive, 33 years of Division I coaching. Give us a little background as to kind of where you've been and the type of offenses that you've run. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been 33 years. Sometimes it seems like more, and sometimes obviously it seems like it's gone fast. But, you know, I started my career as a graduate assistant at NC State after I was done playing. And then I spent eight years at uh, Tennessee Chattanooga as my first job. As I was uh, quarterback coach for four years, wide receivers coach for four years. And then I grew up in the state of Ohio. I actually went back to Ohio for 17 years. I went to uh, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio for eight years. I was the offense coordinator for four, head coach for four. Then I went to Akron for a year and Youngstown State for eight. And then I went back down south for a little bit. I went to Charlotte for a year, JMU for two, and Buffalo for two, and then spent last year as an analyst down in East Carolina. Yeah. Um, but it's been, you know, we've, you know, we built the offense really around our personnel over the years. When I first went to Miami, we built it around Ben Roethlisberger, you know, obviously his strengths and the people that we had at that time. You know, we've had running quarterbacks at times. We've had guys that really were drop back guys. So we build it around our, our, uh, our, our personnel. Uh, everybody always asks, what describe your offense? You know, we, we've got some spread elements. We've got some pro style elements. We've got some West Coast elements. I call it a multiple spread. Uh, we'll attack with personnel and formations. and. We're just going to play fast and be physical. And, you know, like I said, I'm looking forward to getting out there and really seeing what kind of personnel we have and we'll build around that. Yeah, I guess the, the, the question is, you know, where do you start, right? And it sounds like you've had experience kind of getting in there and seeing, okay, these are the ingredients that I have to, to cook with. This is what it's going to look like because 
I mean, there might be some guys that say, this is my system and this is going to be the way we do it, but that doesn't sound like your approach. Well, no, and I think, again, I, and I go out and speak with certain clinics throughout the year, and it really starts with the quarterback. Um, what can he do? What does he bring to your offense? Is he a, is he a dual threat guy? Is he more of a drop back guy? Is he more of a runner? Um, just because I've been coaching 30 years, just because I've got my favorite routes and my favorite things to do, if we're not good at that, you know, we can't do that. So. It's going to be really, it's the 15 practices that we get. Obviously, I'm getting to know the kids. Um, it was good to, that we'll have four weeks putting our offense together before spring break. But once we get out there and really I can see where our personnel is, we'll build it around that. Yeah. You know, we obviously, we've added some pieces uh, at the offensive line. Uh, we should have more depth there. We've added some, some transfers at the receiver position. So I'll be anxious to see what we can do, and, and we'll put it together. We're not going to be a finished product in the spring. It's going to have to go through uh, fall practice and kind of see what we do best. But, you know, we hit that field on August 31st. You know, we've got to – we'll have a good idea of what we're doing and we'll take it game by game then. You mentioned it starts with the quarterback. What are your initial impressions? I know you're still getting accustomed yeah. to everything here of Tyson Pumachong and what yeah. he can do. Well, we've got Tyson coming back. And, um, you know, I've looked at all his film and obviously he brings a lot of uh, things to the table that he can do well. Uh, the number one thing with him is just making sure he's healthy. You know, obviously he started out well last year and got banged up and, you know, he wasn't the same quarterback he was earlier in the season. So we've got to get him healthy so that, that he can do everything on our offense. And then, you know, we've got some young guys. Ahmad actually played last year in, in a number of games and we got a freshman and some other guys that we've added. So really I've got to see, you know, I'm kind of getting used to seeing what they can do. You know, we're able to now with the off season, you're able to use the football and things like that. So even though we're not practicing, I'm able to see some of the things that they can do physically and, and we'll keep building on that. But you know, until we get out there on the field, you never know how guys are going to react when it's 11 on 11. So we'll get the offense and defense in and then we'll play off their strengths. You mentioned you have previous head coaching experience mm -hmm. when you were at Miami and you've been at some of these pockets where Charlotte was a young program, yeah. just jumping yeah. to the FBS level. You helped them get to a, a record high in wins. JMU kind of transitioning yeah. upward. Of course, they've been on that trajectory. So how does that experience and programs that have been in the building process help you to build it here in Amherst? Well, I don't know if it's much as uh, the building process of the program as much. Obviously, it starts with the quarterback. You know, like I said, I've, when I've gone into certain places, um, for example, when we got Ben Roethlisberger, he was a freshman. He was a redshirt freshman. Uh, when I went to Charlotte, uh, it was a, a redshirt freshman quarterback. When I went to GMU, I was getting a Ben DiNucci, who was a fifth-year kid that I was his fifth quarterback coach and fifth yep. coordinator in five years. Tyson obviously has played a lot of football. So, um, but I think the other thing too is, you know, the thing that I'm familiar with is there's a lot of people on our schedule next year that I'm familiar with. You know, we're playing five Mac schools, which <laughs> I've played all those teams within the last three years. Yeah. So there's some familiarity there. Um, but you know, this program has obviously been one that, uh, it's kind of like JMU in that, um, had a lot of success at the one double A level, obviously FCS yeah. now. They moved up, what, 10 or 12 years ago. And you know, it's been kind of like the Charlotte where there's been some good times and some bad times. And I think from, from playing against, uh, UMass two years ago when I was at Buffalo and then watching what they did last year there's a lot more talent in this program I think the the trajectory is going the right way and with the pieces they've added uh, I'll be anxious to see how our talent level is but I know that they have brought a lot of guys in the program that have played at bigger schools and had production so I think that's that's what excites me most that we've added pieces like that that we can build on. Everyone's excited about that talent, Coach. Yeah. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do this spring. Speaking of bringing in the talent, we're going to talk with the Midnight Ride Collective and how they've helped develop some of that talent here in Amherst. But first, let's take a look back at the UMass Club's State of the Football Program event that was held down in Boston. <laughs> People in the flagship are really supportive of 
what UMass is building and, and the collective and the resources that we've been building. Oh, it's incredible. Like the transfer class and the guys that have been here at the program and the culture that we have. Like Providing opportunities for, uh, when you meet our players, you want to invest in them. They're unbelievable people. We're excited to take that next step as a team and as a unit and the, as a general, so. And we continue on our spring football special coming at you from Boston at the Mass Club. And we're going to talk about the Midnight Ride Collective with the co-founder and executive director, Corey Schneider. Corey, how are you doing? Thanks for taking the time, man. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Happy to be here at the UMass Club. Always very beautiful spot, a lot, lot nicer than my living conditions senior year <laughs> at UMass. So it's a great place to be. How did you guys start? First of all, I love the name, the Midnight Ride Collective. You know, where did this form and, you know, who's been kind of at the helm of getting this to where it is right now? Yeah, so it's really been me and my partner, Tim McDermott, and Tim and I did not know each other uh, before this. And it was probably around a little after Thanksgiving of uh, 2022. And individually, like we'd reached out, Ryan and I told Ryan that I wanted to get more involved in some capacity. And he essentially was like, OK, we're working on something like I'll get back to you. Yeah. And then right after Thanksgiving, he asked if I'd be interested in getting an NIL collective up off the ground, and I immediately said yes without knowing really anything about NIL. No one did, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and so met Tim, and it was an immediate, you know, we just meshed very well together, and, and really our vision and what we were trying to do. And, and since then, we've kind of just immersed ourselves in the world of NIL and trying to, to get UMass uh, out in front of it. And so it's been... Uh, it's been a, an exciting process. It's been yeah. an interesting process. So the collective provides name, image, and likeness opportunities, essentially some financing for student athletes. And when you step out of the, the bigger schools, the, the SEC world, you know, where does the collective fundraising in terms of what you guys have been able to generate, how does that stack up against maybe schools that are more peers at the UMass level? Yeah, I mean, that's the exciting part that our peers really the advantage for UMass is that there's a lot of G5 programs that that want to get an NIL collective up off the ground but don't have the capacity and so it's a struggle um, like I, I mentioned before Coastal Carolina's collective shut down just because they don't have the support it's a full-time job and, it is and so and it takes a village and, and so one of the things UMass uh, has is a lot of people that care and they've uh, joined you in the collective providing opportunities for the student athletes. And I wanted to kind of touch upon because what I've seen, at least just talking with some of the student athletes that uh, you guys have been working with, is that 
I think when people feel about the student athletes in the collective space, they think it's gaudy. There's Mercedes and big time cars that these kids get handed, but it's a more practical approach to what you guys are providing. What are some of those things? Absolutely. So you know, we are not, <clears throat> you know, we're not giving Lamborghinis out on campus or anything like that. It's very much tangible resources. You know, Tim and I have built relationships within uh, the town of Amherst. And so for, you know, the first time we have impact players living off campus in, in some places that are very, very nice. Yeah. Well, also you're talking about guys that are older now coming in from the transfer portal that have families. Absolutely. Um, K Ron, great example. K Ron has a daughter. Uh, you know, it makes a massive difference in these guys' lives because at the FBS level, these guys are a step away from realizing a dream. And to let them just focus primarily on what they need to do as a UMass football player, as well as a student, it's an absolute game changer to be able to, to give um, provide that level of support. When other players and prospective student athletes see the work that you guys have done to build this collective, how does that help this whole program recruit to play at UMass? I mean, I think it's a complete game changer. I think that we have a formula at UMass that is very hard to replicate elsewhere in the country where we are a university that athletes want to be at. Uh, we have a coach that guys want to play for that can get guys to the NFL. And it's now out there that we have, you know, legitimate NIL resources to help guys out. And I think that that is a winning combination. And I think that that is going to kind of help us carry us on in this new era. Corey, keep up the good work. Thanks so much. Thank you. Back with more on the UMass Sports Insider Football Spring Special. Behind your team and your school, we're also the team our customers rely on. Wherever things are getting done, powered up, and made better with Caterpillar equipment in the Northeast, you'll find Milton Cat, the team prepared for every challenge. Milton Cat, always ready. At Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine, you'll find sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Start your comeback story today. We know you're busier than ever before caring for your children, your parents, or a loved one. And don't forget about yourself. You deserve a health plan that guides you along the way and helps you make the decisions that matter most. Health New England has options designed to meet the needs of everyone in your life. We'll be here for you every step of the way. Get a health plan that grows with you. Health New England, where you matter. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app 
today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. When you need to dig, lift, move, cut, or just about anything else, then dial up the rental source staffed with equipment and construction experts. They'll help you get the right machine for the job and make sure it's delivered when and where you need it. With locations across New England and the newest and most reliable inventory, Milton Rents is your local source. here on our football spring special show and we are going to walk the Bob and Marianne Foot Hall of Fame hallway here in the Marty Jacobson Football Performance Center with returning running back and star for the Minutemen, K. Ron Lynch Adams. K. Ron, how you doing, man? Good to see you. You too. How you doing? Pretty good. Welcome back, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. What led to, you know, a decision that you had to make? You've been playing football for a little bit now. Yeah. To come back for your final year here. Um, this is really just, just a lot of just thought and prayer. Um, just talking with my family and everything and just making sure that like our next steps is our best steps. So I mean, it's really just communication with family and everything. Over 1,100 yards last mm -hmm. year, 12 touchdowns. Do you remember every single big run that you have or do they blur together? No, they blur together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember too much. Like it, it all be a blur. Like after, after like I do certain runs, I be having like short term memory loss, like with good and bad. So like if it's bad, I try my best to forget it. And if it's good, I try my best to forget it. So I don't keep dwelling on it. Tell me about your relationship with quarterback Tyson Pumachong because yeah. he's coming back as well. Yeah, man, that's my guy. Soon, when soon he got here, like my first day seeing him, I, we were talking and we, we like started to see how how much we we kind of like have the same story as far as far as like going to Power Five and coming down to a, a like a G five level. So like we kind of mesh instantly. Like we kind of got the same got the same dreams and the same aspirations. So like that's my guy. From, yeah. from day one, soon we came in here, we started working and meshing. I'm like, yeah, this is my guy. You're coming into what will be your sixth year of uh, college football, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> How have you developed a voice, become more of a vocal leader? Mm -hmm. Now you've got a whole new crew of guys right. coming in to help yeah, you. Yeah, um, really just, just kind of just using my experience and, and the things that I've been through to kind of help other guys that may be younger than me or haven't had the same experiences as me. Um, like kind of just like, because I haven't always been – like the starting back, like I had, I had a, a process where I was behind and kind of built my way through. So I feel like this, my experiences in college, kind of really helped me, like to to be a voice and be a leader in in, in locker room. Can you practice shedding tackles? Because you do uh, it so well, yeah. I don't know how it happens. Can, no. Is that something you just develop or you try? Uh, to yeah, do I mean, it I, I try my best to just kind of work balance, balance drills. Um, just ch trying to be on one leg a lot because you know we never really on both so just trying to really be balanced and just kind of be a hard to tackle in any way I can be yeah you've got a, a great running backs coach mm -hmm. and coach Mincy how has he helped you and developed your man game? uh he helped me a lot honestly uh really just giving me different different aspects of the game uh helping me see different blocking schemes helping me understand what the defense is doing I think that's really a big part for me is knowing what my opponent is trying to do to me you know what I'm saying yeah. so I feel like that really helped me a lot and giving me different different avenues to better my game. We've been talking a lot about the Midnight Ride Collective. Mm -hmm. Have they been helpful in providing opportunities for you? Oh yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. yeah How for does sure. that change your life? Um, I mean, you got a family. Yeah, I have a family. Now. I have a daughter, so really that, that helped take a lot off, helping me with my rent. Um, it just it just takes a, a barrier off of me, so I can stay focused on school, football, and being the best father I can be, best human me I can be. That's great, man. Tell me that's about it. what you're seeing from this incoming class that we're talking about on yeah. this show and the talent that's coming in. Yeah, like, soon I got here uh, from, like, the, the winter break, I got here, I mean, I, I said, it's a different feel. It's a different feel. Like, and I, everybody I seen, it was a new, it was a new face. And uh, I was just, I was just excited. I, I know, like, seeing new guys that come in and buy in, I know, like, they want to win and they want to do it now. So I'm excited to have them. We're excited to have you back. Yes, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. Ron Lynch Adams, everybody. When we come back on the show, we've got a guy that's returning and one of the newcomers, and they've got a relationship 
that goes back quite a ways. We'll talk with them when we return here on the UMass Sports Insider. How you doing? I'm Tyson Pumachan. I play quarterback and I'm a graduate student. Uh, hi, my name is Frank Latson Jr. I'm a wide receiver and I'm a graduate. Uh, I first met Frank back in 2018. We was at a recruiting, uh, recruiting thing at Clemson and when I first met him he was kind of, or both of us just kind of got the personalities to just stay away until we get to know each other and then we kind of start meshing and gelling. But My first impression of Tyson was just like, I don't know. To me, he's just Tyson. Like that's that's T. Poom. That's that's my guy. Like that's who I came in with at Clemson. He committed like right after me. Like we committed basically at the same time. Like the Clemson. And he just he's just always always been that guy. You know, I built a relationship with early on, just on the practice field and workouts. And from there, we just been growing together, getting better. You know, on and off the field. As a wide out. Mm -hmm. He's slow, he can't catch. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Look, Frank, he one of them dudes, he he cut from that cloth, like he gonna work, he gonna work. Um, he committed to his game. He's a fast, long, he could jump, um, he's strong. I mean, I like throwing the tall, fast dudes. It's easier, I can just put it up. They they gotta do go do what they do, so I love throwing on him. I love mm -hmm. him as his his style, all that, so. He's definitely up there with the best. I mean, he know he played, he played, he learned from some of those guys too, like you know, like Trevor and everything. So he know he up there, he up there with the best of them. He's special, man. I always say, it, man, he's special. Just things he could do. He's a game changer. You know what I'm talking about? Just his ability to throw the ball, his his ability to run the ball. You know, his ability to make plays. You know, so with him, with him back there at quarterback, you know, I feel like we always got a chance, no matter what, like because he could do so much. Nobody else know, but me and Frank, we've been supposed to do something like this. Yeah. But uh, God worked in mysterious ways, so he chose here to to let that happen, and it's been great. Like I'm just having my brother and my boy since since back in the day, somebody I could call on. I know yeah. that's that's gonna pick up, always be around. Uh, so it's good having him around, definitely. Coming here was definitely like he played a big role in that, uh, obviously, but. You know, it's something that, you know, just talking to him about, you know, we came in together, we started together, it's like, why not go out together, you know, one more one more last time, you know, like I know I know what I'm gonna get from you, you know what you're gonna get from me, like like let's go to work, man, let's make something special happen, you know, you might let's build something, you know. Is he funny? Yeah, he's a funny guy. Is he? Yeah, he's a real funny guy. Real funny guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't even want well, to get let's it touch out. on that topic. Hey, let's since I've been topic. up here, since I moved to UMass and I've been going to school, he have not. He beat me once in that. He's once. Lying. He did a lot once. of camera. He, he, he beat me camera. once. 
He's lying to the camera <laughs> beat right me now. He once in Madden. How many games? Once in, probably like eight games. He probably only beat me once. Man, shout out to EA Sports though, man, for bringing the game back. Your rain definitely got to be out there. Like, at least, like, at least 85 or better. Like, at Ooh. least, like, at least, like, Ooh. at least, like, from what I know, like, you know what I'm talking about? From what I've seen with my own eyes, you know, at least 85 or better, at least. I give my dog a... Uh, at least it should be a 90, 90 plus. Ooh, At least a 90 90? plus. We got to talk to EA Sports about 90. that one. Um, yeah, I think uh, Coach Brown, he brought in a lot of new dudes. It's a new roster if you look at it across the board, all positions. And I think uh, we brought some dudes in who could really add value. Guys like Frank, guys uh, and other dudes inside the transfer portal that we brought in. Um, they come with experience and they come with a mindset that's just ready to work. Um, mindset ready to win. and mindset to help to this program, not take away from it. So I think that uh, Coach Brown doing a good job of, of recruiting, and I think that the ship going to take off nice and well, nice and well man. Yeah. We're the team behind your team and your school. We're also the team our customers rely on. Wherever things are getting done, powered up, and made better with Caterpillar equipment in the Northeast, you'll find Milton Cat, the team prepared for every challenge. Milton Cat, always ready. The reviews are in. The Mass Lottery's first $50 instant game is the must-have scratch ticket of the year. How do you like them apples? Players agree, it's the best payout yet. Show me the money! Lottery Quarterly raves a grand prize like we've never seen. Massachusetts makes history again. Billion Dollar Extravaganza, now playing at a lottery retailer near you. The Learfield Director's Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award online and through L Directors Cup on Twitter. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. At Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine, you'll find sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Start your comeback story today. When you need to dig, lift, move, cut, or just about anything else, then dial up the rental source staffed with equipment and construction experts. They'll help you get the right machine for the job and make sure it's delivered when and where you need it. With locations across New England and the newest and most reliable inventory, Milton Rents is your local source. Back here on the UMass Sports Insider Football Spring Special Show. We've been telling you, the guys are on campus and they have been working out. And we are in the locker room with one of the newcomers for the Minutemen and Jalen Hudson, defensive end. Jalen, thanks for being here today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Great, man. Welcome to Amherst. Thank you. What's been your impressions of uh, this facility and the program so far? Um, the program's been great. You know, getting acclimated to everybody that's been around in the program. And they just really brought me in. They took me under their wing. We're going through mat drills. We're going through the grind of the, um, of the off season. We're really getting to know each other. We're really pushing each other, and it's really it's really good work. And I'm I'm excited to be here. Excited to get to work. You got all these transfers coming in. You've got a group of freshmen as well. But it feels like having everybody kind of here now in front of spring ball 
is only going to help your team. Oh, absolutely. I think you have to be together through those dog days to really build that camaraderie and to build that culture that you want. You know, um, being out there and bleeding with each other and really sacrificing and, and going through the tough times, you know, Coach Brown has this saying, eat dirt. Like, we're eating <laughs> dirt together. It's incredible. Like, you know, that's when you really build that camaraderie and you, you, you realize, like, you can depend on each other. And we're yeah. working towards something. We're building something special. You've been playing college football now for a while. You're entering your sixth season, essentially, at the redshirt year, the COVID year. Uh, you spent all that time at Wake Forest. What did you learn in your, you know, five years there, and, and how are you going to apply it here at UMass? Um, being at Wake was such a blessing. You know, we had some great years there, and I've, I've grown so much as a football player and grown so much as a man. Um, Coach Claus and the program that he runs there is incredible. We've had some great leaders from like the Sam Hartmans to the Boogie Bashams and you know, guys are really achieving their dreams and going on to the NFL. So it's like just building that and building that legacy and bringing the culture and, and values that were instilled in me there and just bringing it here and really just, they already have the foundation here. So it's just being, being, a, being a cog in that machine, just keeping it going, you know? Give us some insight as to who you are as a player. What are some of the characteristics you're proud of when you're on the football field? I like to say I go hard. Um, I'm really, <laughs> really physical at the point of attack. Um, really just challenge myself to demand the best out of everybody that's around me. And I really push myself to deliver every play. You know, this season is very important for me. I lost my mom this past December. So this, this season is important for me. I'm really playing for her. What was her name? Latasha. You miss her, obviously. And playing with a heavy heart this year and hopefully you've got a family now here at UMass that can help you kind of get to where you want to go. Yes sir. When you talk about yourself academically what are the things that you've accomplished and what interests you? Um, yeah so I got my undergrad in communications from Wake Forest and right now I'm focusing on getting my uh, master's in business analytics. I'm in a certificate program right now but hopefully transition over and get that started and then um, I'm really, want, I'm really interested in sports broadcasting. Let's go. Really interested in just giving back to the youth. I do a lot of stuff with sports literacy and um, just really impacting the community. That's where everywhere I go, just try to leave it better than I found it. You're in a great place for sports broadcasting because that means you get to work with me on a daily basis, all right? We're yes, looking sir. forward to that. <laughs> when you see how, you know, this team is bringing in these guys, right? And you see kind of the walks of life that they've been through. Does that make you optimistic about what this team can do in terms of the talent that you're seeing coming in? Yes, sir. I think talent is here. You know, always you got to put in the work. You got to put in the effort. I think that's the biggest point right here. So in order to just get out there and go through spring ball, go through those dog days, really um, compete, I think that's the biggest thing that we have to do now. All the pieces are here, but we really just got to go out there and work. Nothing's going to be nothing's going to be given. So we have all the talent in the world, but you have to work. Who was your favorite football player growing up? Julio Jones. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's my guy. You weren't a wide receiver, though. I wasn't a wide receiver, but I just loved the way he attacked the game and just the way he went about his business. He's, you know, he's a professional about it, and that's how you got to be with, when, you're in, when, you're in this, uh, when you're playing this yeah. game. Why UMass? Why UMass? Um, just the opportunity. The foundation was here. You know, guys like Tyler Martin, he was able to host me on my official, and I just got to be around him and, and what he said he was building here and, and the, like, not the, the vision that, that's here with Don, Coach Don Brown. Coach Albert, Coach Steven Terrell, uh, Coach Reed, like those relationships that I have now, those are really the reason I'm here. That's great. And of course, the mat room, right? Of course. Right. Gotta love the mat room. Damon, thanks so much. Looking forward to talking to you throughout the year and, and growing your broadcast uh, career. Meanwhile, speaking of the mat room, it is in full effect. Guys working out, guys getting after it, and some sights and sounds from what that looks like here on campus.
Back with you one final time on our UMass Sports Insider Football Spring Special presented by Milton Cat. We've had a lot of conversation about this program and a lot of excitement coming your way. And we're going to wrap it up with the director of athletics, Ryan Bamford, joining us now. And Ryan, a, a big class, a lot of excitement for the talent level that head coach Don Brown and his staff is bringing in here. Good group of talent. I, I will tell you, I'm just uh, almost more impressed with the leadership the experience, and just that group as a group of human beings. I, I, they're a great group to be around. Um, I think we're going to be well served in the locker room with this group, and um, I think that's going to allow us to take that next step from a competitive standpoint. Speaking of competitiveness, you look at the schedule this year. It's uh, quite a doozy. You've got yeah. uh, three SEC schools on the uh, schedule as we take a look at it. You know, tell me about the makeup of this schedule and how it came to be. Well, it was a, a combination of a number of things. And, you know, it just happened that we had those SEC opponents all factor into this year. We, had, we owed one more game to Mississippi State from an earlier two for one. Uh, this was the year they could not move the game. Obviously, we had the bye game with, with Georgia on there as well. And then the opportunity to get Missouri at home. When you get a chance to have an SEC team come into your building, I think you have to take advantage of that. And when we booked the game, I think Missouri was like 3-9 and nine or 4-8 and eight that <laughs> year. And lo, lo and behold, here they are as a top-10 program uh, potentially coming in to, to McGurk next October. So um, certainly some challenges there, but... Uh, when Army dropped us, we, we added an FCS. I thought I, I probably would have booked a group of five game except for the fact that we're playing three SEC opponents. I thought that the balance, in order to balance it a little bit, it made sense to at that late time to get Central Connecticut in there. And then I think we've got a, a real handful of games that are going to be good peer G5 games, you know, where we're going to test our medal. I think they're games that we've been in in the last two years. And now we, we need to continue to try to convert those to wins like we did at Army last yeah. year. And, um, and you know, we, we were so close in so many other ones. I think this is the first month or so of the season is a chance for us to get off to a good start. Yeah, you've been so close against Eastern Michigan past oh a couple goodness. of years. Yes. And that's really one you're going to circle on the calendar sure. because you look at this, this uh, class as we take another look at the, the names that are joining a lot of redshirt seniors, a lot of guys in their sixth year of football, and they're here on campus getting ready through spring yeah. and for that game against Eastern Michigan. So, yeah, that first slate, that first uh, couple of uh, games is really going to be important. Yeah, and, you know, for the first time ever, we're going to have, or I shouldn't say ever, I think the first time in my tenure, we're going to have homecoming in September. It's going to be earlier this year, uh, September 21st. And, um, but I think a great chance for us to get off on the right, right uh, stride with Eastern Michigan in week one. We're going to have a great crowd for that. I, I think people are excited about the momentum about this class and about where we left last year. You know, still left some fruit on the tree. And yeah. I think people are, are thinking that we can convert some of those to wins this year and get, hopefully get to a bowl. Shifting under your feet. You know, you mentioned Army earlier. They were on the schedule. Then yeah. they joined a conference. They've been independent for the most part of their existence. Right. So uh, that certainly uh, makes another challenge for you. And when we talk about the development of this program, we've seen throughout the course of this show guys that have been benefited by the Gridiron Club, guys that have been benefited by the Midnight Ride Collective. And, you know, those areas are really the area UMass needs to focus on to continue to grow this program. Well, I'll tell you, we're institutionally, we've put our chips in. We're certainly, we've grown our budget uh, exponentially in the last decade. And I think we look, we're really now about where the median of group of five schools are. And we continue to try to evolve and grow that. But there's no doubt that the Gridiron Club, the support we've had around that, and the things that it does to support nutrition and, uh, you know, our student athlete academic experience, the stuff that we do in the weight room, um, all those things that allow us to get better, but also give our kids a great experience. Those things are being taken care of. And now we've seen the evolution of name, image, and likeness. And I think the opportunity to invest there has paid dividends with this recruiting class and some of their opportunities to get name, image, and likeness deals. And that's made a difference. And now when you start to recruit and you say, hey, we've got this system built and we've had student athletes who've taken advantage of that, recruits can say, oh my gosh, there really is somebody who's, you're not just talking about it, you're doing it. And so I would encourage anybody who's investing in our program 
um, to really consider those two opportunities, those two avenues, the Gridiron Club and the Midnight Ride. We've got great leadership in both. And, uh, and I think those are, those are ultimately things that help us win. Yep. A lot of excitement for I'm, this I'm, season in uh, particular. I'm pumped for spring yeah. ball. Yeah. I always, spring ball is like really when you start to see things start to come together. And again, uh, just being around these young men, um, we've got a great group of young men in that locker room. I, I, I think people should be not only excited about what we're going to do in football, but proud of the ways that they represent this university. Thanks so much, Ryan. Thanks, Jay. That'll do it for us on this edition of the UMass Sports Insider, our football spring special brought to you by Milton Cat. You can check out the season ticket deposits are available now for the season, and we will see you at the spring game here on campus on April 27th. Big thanks to all of our guests throughout the show. Until next time from Amherst, my name is Jay Burnham saying so long, everybody.